Hi, how are you doing today? I'm so glad to see you back again. It's time to read another bedtime story to you or a daytime story. I guess it depends on what time you're gonna watch this video. Anyway, I chose another book that I used to like when I was a little girl and it was just a really fun book to read. And so I chose Mr. Bear's House. And that's the book we're going to read today. There's Mr. Bear. And look right here, it says, welcome. Welcome, that means, I guess he's inviting us inside, isn't he? So let's go inside this book and see Mr. Bear's house, shall we? All right. So we're gonna open the book and first thing we wanna do is see who wrote that book. And this book was written by Fenella Roth and illustrated by Claire McKinley. And remember what the illustrated means. That means that the lady or the man who illustrated, in other words, who drew the pictures, they're an illustrator. So this book was illustrated by Claire McKinley. And she drew all those pictures. Isn't that nice? All right, let's start our book, shall we? Oh, look, there's a picture of Mr. Bear and his house. See that? I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see better. Do you wear glasses? I wear glasses, only to read though. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a bear who lived in a cave in the woods. I'm gonna sit this way so you can kind of see the pictures. He was a fat brown bear and he liked to go walking. One day he walked to the edge of town. He heard a great hammering noise and peeking out between the leaves of the bushes, he saw a carpenter building a house. See the pictures? Mr. Bear was fascinated. Every day he came back to watch. He saw the carpenter hammer the nails. He saw the house grow, walls, roof, windows, and a porch. How much prettier than my cave, Mr. Bear said to himself. I want a house to live in. And so Mr. Bear went about the forest collecting pieces of wood until he had a big stack. Now, he thought, I need a hammer. And so he made a hammer out of a rock and a stick. Now, he said, I need some nails. See there? <clears throat> and so he walked to the edge of town and looked around the new house. It was late in the day and the carpenter had gone home. Sure enough, there were some nails lying about on the ground. Mr. Bear picked them up and carried them back to the woods. Now, Mr. Bear was really busy. He hammered and he hammered and hammered, one nail after another. The animals in the forest heard the banging noise and came to see what was happening. Whatever are you doing, chirped the robins. Let's turn the page. <clears throat> I am building a house, said Mr. Bear. With wood and such noise, the birds shook their heads. We use grasses and we don't make any noise at all. But I'm too big for a nest, said Mr. Bear. The beavers from the pond came over next. Whatever are you doing, they asked. I'm building a house, explained Mr. Bear. We use mud, not nails to hold our house together, said the beavers. See the beavers? And there's Mr. Bear just hammering away, isn't he? <clears throat> Here's the next page. Mud won't be strong enough for my house. Mr. Bear said. But, notice one old beaver, the wind will blow through the cracks in your house. 
Mr. Bear stopped work and surveyed his walls. Yes, there were cracks between the logs, and but he could see daylight shining through. He shook his head sadly. It won't be as warm as a cave, ventured a timid bear. Mr. Bear looked quite disappointed. Oh, let's all help Mr. Bear, the old beaver said. We beavers will put mud in the cracks. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bear smiled happily, and the beavers hurried to the pond to fetch some mud. They put the mud in the cracks and smoothed it with their broad tails until no more daylight came shining through. Finally, the four walls of the house were built with spaces for windows and a door. The rain can come in, said the rabbits, who had come to watch. We don't have rain in our houses. See the rabbits, the beaver, they're helping, aren't they? We'll turn that page. I need a roof, Mr. Bear explained to them, but he himself was puzzled. How could he ever put a roof on his four walls? Oh, we'll help you, sang the birds. We'll make your roof. How? asked Mr. Bear. Well, we'll weave a roof with long grasses and a thatched roof. Mr. Bear smiled his thanks. It took a long time for the birds to make the big thatched roof that Mr. Bear needed. While they gathered the grass and wove it together. Look, it's him weaving it all together. While they gathered the grass and they weaved it all together, Mr. Bear was busy putting in his floor. Hammer, 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 bang, bang, bang. The noise echoed through the woods. As Mr. Bear put the last nail into his floor, a blue jay flew over his head. The roof is finished and ready to put on, he called. In a minute, hundreds of birds came flying and fluttering through the woods. They carried the new roof in their beaks. The blue jay waited until it was exactly over the top of the four walls. Now, he shouted, drop it. The birds opened their beaks and the roof fell right into place. Wow. That's a different way to build a roof, isn't it? Here's the next page. How Splendid, how splendid, Mr. Bear danced in glee. Then he went ahead and made his door. His house looked, it really looks like a house now, but there were still no windows, just big openings where the windows should fit. The rain can come in the windows, said the beavers, shaking their heads. Oh, the house will be cold, sighed the rabbits. Mr. Bear was dismayed. I shall have to ask the carpenter about windows, he decided. And so he walked to the edge of town again. There he saw the carpenter building another house. We'll turn the page. Mr. Carpenter, he called. The carpenter looked surprised. He put down his hammer, climbed down his ladder, and asked, Did you call me? Mr. Bear nodded. Yes, please, I did. I've never met a talking bear before, began the carpenter, scratching his head. All I want to know, said Mr. Bear, is how to put a window in a house. The carpenter looked bewildered. Then, seeing how serious the bear was, he explained. First, we make a frame. Then, we putty in the glass. Mr. Bear frowned. He did not understand. Why, the carpenter asked, do you want me, do you, why do you want to know? Because my house needs windows, answered Mr. Bear. 
Your house? More amazement showed in the carpenter's face. Your house? Yes, explained Mr. Bear. I am building a house, but I can't seem to manage the windows. Well, said the carpenter, if a bear can build a house, I guess I can put in the windows and without charge. He's going to do Mr. Bear a favor, isn't he? Oh, exclaimed Mr. Bear. Do you mean that? I certainly do, replied the carpenter. Well, then, come and see my house, Mr. Bear urged. The carpenter went with him into the forest. There he saw a little house with a thatched roof and a wooden door. He opened the door and stepped inside onto the wooden floor. Unbelievable, he exclaimed. Why, if I hadn't seen it myself, I would never have believed it. He went over and looked at the two spaces Mr. Bear had left for his windows. Tomorrow morning, announced the carpenter, I shall be here early to put in your windows. He shook Mr. Bear's paw and left. Mr. Bear was quite pleased with his kindness. The very next morning, the carpenter came and put in the windows, frame and putty and glass and all, and Mr. Bear thanked him warmly as he left. Now Mr. Bear's house is finished, sang the birds. No, Mr. Bear told them, not yet. I have to have some furniture. And he made a bed and a table and four chairs. Now, said Mr. Bear, I shall have a party for all of my kind friends. The birds brought berries, the squirrels brought nuts, the beaver sent some apples, and the rabbits, they came with carrots. Mr. Bear furnished the honey. He invited the kind carpenter too, and that good man brought ice cream enough for all. Ah, oh, happy day, sighed Mr. Bear. And that is how fat brown Mr. Bear came to live in his comfortable little house in the woods. And that is the end of our story. I liked Mr. Bear's house in the woods. And it was so nice of that carpenter to come and help him, don't you think? I like to help people too. Do you? Sometimes I think, I wonder how I can help people. I wonder if you wonder those kinds of things too. And sometimes I need help myself. And I don't always like to ask for it. But you know, it's okay to ask for help when you need it. You just have to ask nicely. And it's also okay to give help to people when they need it. But again, make sure you know those people and that those people aren't going to hurt you. But always be kind and always be giving and always be generous. That's what I got out of this book. What did you get out of this book? I liked Mr. Bear. I liked the birds and the beavers and the deer and the rabbits. And that nice Mr. Carpenter who came and put in Bear's windows for free. Anyway, I'll pick another book and I'll be back next week. I'll see you all soon. Until then, take care of yourself, be well, and be safe. And above all, be kind and be happy.